In this video, we review the new Azure Image Builder Portal integration and use it to create a custom image in Azure. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Image Builder is helpful for anyone who creates and updates Azure VM images. I'm looking at you, AVD and Windows 365 admins, but it's not limited to Windows. We can use it to manage Linux images as well. Have a virtual appliance image that needs to be updated occasionally? Image Builder can help with that. Before we get into that, please like and subscribe. That helps the channel tremendously. Also, check out my courses on AVD, Windows 365, Hybrid Identities, and Cost Management in Azure on Udemy.com. Links are below. And a big thanks to all my channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. Image Builder has been around for a while, but had one slight drawback, JSON. It was all template driven, and if you're not fond of matching squiggly brackets, it could be tedious to work with. That limitation is a thing of the past because Image Builder now has portal integration. If you like working with ARM templates, it's still an option. Let's take a step back and talk about why we would use Image Builder. The goal is to create a pipeline that automatically builds a fully customized VM image. We start by selecting the source image. This could be an ISO, a Windows or Linux image from the Azure Marketplace, or an existing custom image. Next, customizations are added. This step uses PowerShell or Bash-based commands or scripts that install the applications we want to add to the image. I'm using PowerShell in this example. Then finally, the image is distributed to a storage account as a VHD, as a managed image, or to the Azure Compute Gallery. From there, we build a VM from the image. Previously, the source and distribution sections were configured with a JSON template. Now we can use the Azure portal for those steps, a nice option for those getting started or where JSON configuration is a limiting factor. Coming up, we're going to configure Image Builder for our environment, build an image, and then deploy a VM using that image. We start by registering the required features on the subscription. The features are on the screen. All these features must be available on the subscription for Image Builder to work. Next, we create a resource group for the user assigned managed identity and other artifacts from the build including the final managed image. Then we create the managed identity and a new RBAC role. The new role gives the identity rights to create the image and add it to the resource group. These steps require PowerShell and a JSON template for the role permissions. It only needs to be created once on each subscription. I have a link below for code that walks through the steps. Once we have the environment ready, we go to the portal and configure the image template. This step doesn't create the image, it creates a set of instructions that builds the image. After that, we run the build process that creates the image. We're outputting a managed image in this video, but you should consider using Azure Compute Gallery in production. And finally, we build a VM from the image and verify our customizations. We're going to apply a simple customization for this video. I'll go deeper into customizations in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Let's move to VS Code to get started. Here we are in VS Code. I'll provide a link to this file below. The first step is to register features needed for Image Builder. There's a CLI and PowerShell option for this, and there's a link to more information in the file. I'm using PowerShell for this example. The first command will get all the features that are required, and if they're not registered, it will register them. Hit F8 to run. Okay, all my features are registered, so nothing happened, but that's okay. Let me change this quick. All right, once the features are registered, we need to create the identity and set role permissions. This is where I'll deviate a bit from the Microsoft documentation. There's a few steps that we'll do in the portal, such as create the deployment. We'll start by running the commands to set the variable for the new resource group name and location. Then we'll run a command that sets the subscription ID. Also, be sure you're logged into the Azure subscription you want to deploy to, and it might help to make sure your AZ modules are up to date. We'll add the subscription ID to a variable. Next, we'll run the command to create a new resource group. This is where we'll add our user assigned identity. Okay, that was created. I'll scroll down. Next, we build the identity variables. The identity has to have a unique name, so this will add a timestamp to the end of the name to make sure it's unique. The next set of commands creates the new user assigned identity in the resource group we just created with the name and the location 
in the variables we've already set. And then he'll assign the user assigned identity ID and principal ID to a couple variables we'll use later on. And before I run this, I want to point out, you should note the name of the identity. There it is again. We'll need it in an upcoming step. Let me clear this out and I'll scroll down. Now we have the identity, but it has no rights. We need to give it rights to create the image. To do that, we're going to download a role definition template and update it with our own settings. This next block of code downloads a JSON role definition template and then updates it with our information. It downloads a JSON file to the current directory from a Microsoft managed GitHub repository. Let's run the first three commands that sets the JSON variable and downloads the file to the current directory. Now if we run the ls or dir command, we have the my role image creation.json file. Let's open that. This is what a role template looks like. We need to modify some settings such as the scope, the subscription, and the resource group. Let's go back to the image builder commands. Next we have a series of commands that replace content in the role template we just downloaded with our own settings. You can see it's doing a simple replace, finding a value, and then replacing it with our value. Let's run that. And if we go back to the my role image creations.json, it's now updated with our information. We can close this file. Next, we'll run the command that uses our updated template to create a new role definition. A role definition, again, is what gives users rights to do things in Azure. Now we have our identity and we have our role definition created. Next, we run a block of commands to grant the role definition to the identity we created earlier at the resource group scope. That sets up our environment so we can run Image Builder. We now have an identity that has rights for Image Builder to create images. And the good news is we only really need to do this once. Next, we'll create a deployment. Go to the Azure portal and search for image templates. From here, we'll create an image template. Select the subscription and the resource group we created in the previous step. We have to use the same resource group. The identity only has rights to that resource group. Give the instance a name, win 10 multi for this example. Set the same region as the resource group and we'll leave the source image as marketplace. Note that you could select an existing managed image or an image from the Azure Compute Gallery. Let's select an image. We're selecting an image from the Azure Marketplace. We could select a Windows 10 or 11 image. And if we scroll down, there's also an option for Windows multi-session with Microsoft 365 apps. This example will use Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session version 22H2 Gen 2. So let's see if we can find that one. Win 10 Enterprise version 22H2 X64 Gen 2. And right under that is the one I'm looking for, Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session version 22H2 Gen 2. And we'll scroll down. We can select one or more option to distribute the image. VM image version will send the image to an Azure Compute Gallery. We have the option for Azure Blob Storage and a managed image. This example will only use a managed image. Give the image a name, Win10 Multi for this example. Set the location, Central US for this example. We can only build VMs in the same region as the image. Next, we need to select the identity we created earlier. It shows the name and the resource group it was created in. Be sure to select the one in the same resource group we're deploying to. Next, go to Customize. This is where the fun begins. Remember, Image Builder starts with the image we select, applies customization, and then creates the image once those customizations are applied. This step creates the customizations. To build an image, it first has to create a VM. 
we can select the size of that VM here. It should match the family and maybe even the size that we'll use the image on to remove any variables that may impact the end results. This example will use a B2MS. We can also select an existing virtual network. This requires additional configuration for the custom role. And finally, the OS disk should match the VMs you plan to build, 128 for this example. We can give that build VM additional privileges by assigning a build VM managed identity. This would be used if we have Key Vault, for example, that had a secret the build VM needed. Leave this as it is and go to Customize with Scripts. We'll add a customizer. We have a few options. We can run a PowerShell command or PowerShell script. We can run a file customizer. This is only good for files up to 20 megabytes. Anything larger, you should use a PowerShell script or inline command instead. We can run an update and a restart. We'll first run an inline command that will download AZ copy. This is a command line utility we can use to download files from blob storage accounts. I plan on using this in the next video that digs deeper into customizing the OS and installing applications. Be sure to click subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications of new content. Let's go back to VS Code. This is a series of commands separated by commas. The first command creates a temp directory. We need an escape character for the backslash. That's why there's two of them. Then it uses invoke web request to download AZ copy and moves the zip file to the temp directory. After that, it extracts the zip file and copies the .exe to the root of the temp file. Let's copy this. And we'll go back to the portal. And we'll paste that in. We have the option to add exit codes, leave that blank. Then we have the option for permissions. We can set it to elevated or none. Leave it as none. Click OK to add. Let's add another. We'll run Windows Update. That way we'll make sure that all the updates have been applied. We can add criteria, filters, and limits. Leave those set to default and click OK. We'll add another. This time we'll run a restart. That way we know it's restarted after applying all of the updates. We have a couple other settings we can change. The default timeout is five minutes and that should be good enough. Click OK. We can move the order up or down and edit them if we need. Go to validation next. We can also validate the image as part of the build with PowerShell inline commands or scripts. Go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. We'll give it a minute to finish. That finished, let's go to image templates. There we go. There's our template. It's important to understand that we have not yet created an image. We've simply created a recipe that will create the image. We'll build the image next, but first go to the resource group we created earlier. I'm gonna open up a new tab. It shows our managed identity and the image template. Let's go back to our image builder tab. Let's go into our template. And at the top, we have the option to start a build. Click Start. This starts the build process. We can watch the progress under Notifications. Let's go back to the other tab for Resource Groups. If we go into Resource Groups and scroll down, look for a resource group with a really long name. Image Builder creates this resource group and is using it to build the image. All the resources it needs to create the image are added to this resource group, and then they're deleted once finished. It does leave behind a storage account with logs that we can use to troubleshoot if there's any issue. The proper way to remove this resource group is to delete the image template. Deleting the image template will remove this resource group. Let's refresh. Now it's created network interfaces, disks, virtual machines, and the virtual network. You can refresh this as it moves along. Eventually, it'll delete everything but the storage account. Once only the storage account is left, then the image process is close to done. We can go back to our image template, and under notifications, it'll indicate when it's finished. This is going to take a few minutes or probably even longer to finish. I'm going to pause here until it's done. 
All right, that took a while. It does have to copy the entire contents of the OS drive to the managed image. That's one of the factors in it taking so long. Let's go back to our resource groups. And if you hit refresh, everything should be gone but the storage account. Let's go back to the managed image resource group. And there we have the image. Let's build a VM from the image to see if our customizations are there. We'll do a quick build on the VM. Open up the image, not the image template, the actual image. We'll create a VM. You can use the existing resource group or create a new one. I'll use the existing. Give the virtual machine a name, win 10 test for this example. We can leave the rest as default. Make sure the virtual machine size is adequate. Leave the rest and go down to administrative account. Supply username and add the passwords. Set the license type, go to review and create. And once validation passes, click create. I'll pause here and come back after it's finished and I've logged in. The VM is finished and I'm logging in and I get this message that it's waiting for the Windows modules installer. This will take 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes and it only happens on the first boot. I have a fix for this that I'll implement in my next video. If you run into this, give it time, it will finish. That took a while, but now we're logged in, and if we open up File Explorer, we'll go to the C drive, go to temp. This is the directory the inline command created, along with the AZ copy application that was downloaded and extracted here. That indicates we successfully built the image with our customizations. One quick thing before we go. If you want to clean up and remove the resource group, the one with a really long name, the one the image template created, we have to remove the template. We'll go into the template, open it up, and delete. Once done, if we go back to the resource groups, do a refresh, and it might take a few seconds, but after a couple refreshes, that resource group is gone. That will remove the template and the associated resource group. That is how to deploy an image template with the new image builder portal functionality. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.